Welcome everybody. If you love to play the blues and you're curious about how to get deeper into blues music, then you're in the right place. Welcome. Thanks so much for joining me. These live streams happen the first Sunday of every month at 12 noon New York City time. Welcome to everybody in the room. So glad you're here. Today's episode all about how great blues riffs become great songs. We are going to be exploring this today with a tune made famous by Eric Clapton and Cream, Sunshine of Your Love. We got a song sheet. We're also going to explore the riff in detail, and I've even created a fretboard roadmap for you. We're going to get into all of this today. I'm so excited to get into this, one of my favorite subjects. And I chose this because uh, when you learn great riffs, you're not only making music, but you're also training your hands, making music at the same time, and learning how to improvise. So it's one of the fastest ways I've found to getting into playing the blues. Before we get into the lesson, just want to let you know really quick, I have just uh, created a link to my first workshop of the year. It is live now, and in one hour, patrons of Ukulele Zen will get a discount code. This is for a workshop all about this subject. We're going to go deeper into the blues over a course of several different workshops where we'll explore ragtime, jug bands, swing and blues, and uh, how to improvise. This is the first one in that series. Uh, tickets are now on sale if you want to join me, but let's get into this lesson first and foremost because I want to give you a taste of what you'll experience there. That workshop will include a replay recording, jam tracks, and a detailed booklet with all the goodies that I just showed you. Let's get started right away by exploring the riff. I want to zoom in onto the details of the the riff, okay? So what we're gonna do is begin by fretting a C major chord. Okay, this is the riff as uh, played all the way through. You can jump in and join in. Let me demonstrate it. Play along as able or strum the chords as able. I will break it down for you in just a moment. Thanks for joining me. Here is the riff in its entirety. One, two, a one, two, three, four. what it sounds like all the way through. Now, if you've never played single note licks, don't sweat it. I'm going to make it really easy for you. I'm going to show you how to play with your thumb, with your fingers, and even with a pick. Okay? Single note melodies will strengthen your hand for all your chords. How are you feeling out there? Carla, thanks for joining. Jama, glad you're here. Gavin, hello. Farmer Stu, yes. Yes, I was doing a little outdoor work earlier. <laughs> Stu, so glad you're here. Stu Popkin, Susan is in the house. Grant is here. Thank you for joining me. Andre in Germany, I hope that you are all doing well. I wanted to come in a little closer, show you this lick. Now, of course, this is Cream 1968. In the video description below is a link to a rare live recording. Uh, it's such an amazing recording. They were such a groundbreaking band, you know. And even if you're not a huge fan of uh, heavy rock, they they paved the way for so much music that uh, was to follow. I want to come in close here 
and then we will explore this in greater detail using this fretboard diagram. By the way, this is the kind of stuff that will be coming uh, along with the workshop. There's a link down below if you're interested. So come on, friends, let's come in real close. and I'm going to break down this lick for you in a way that's beginner friendly. Then we'll jam the tune and then I'm going to show you some simple ways of how you can start to improvise. Yes, you can improvise. You know, all my lessons are always designed to bring that feeling of transformation into, yeah, I can do it. So are you ready? Let's get into it. Come on in close and put your third finger on the third fret of the first string and just play that note, whether you pick with your thumb, whether you, whether you pick with your index or middle finger, or whether you pick with a guitar pick. Yeah. Now the next note is going to be the first fret and then go back to the third fret. Now I'm moving this slowly and for a number of reasons. One is so everybody can keep up with me and second, so you can train a very, very, very important skill. And that is to leave the fingers down in a relaxed way. Okay. So when I play, see all my fingers are pressing down the string but they're not so much pressing with force they're just resting they've come to rest so if you can do this believe it or not these two notes that is a huge leveling up in your left hand technique so come on join in with me make clear sounds play them slowly and then lift up and then go back all right this is different than where the hand is flopping around like this right we want the fingers close to the strings so the notes are just right under our fingers all right thanks for joining me everybody let's play this together three three one three here we go excellent now in a moment we're going to see the diagram now hop these up like this to the second string and now all the fingers are pressing I mean, they're touching. This one's the one that's pressing. Play fingers three, two, one. Yeah, let's do that again. Three, two, one. Wonderful if you can activate your voice with it one more time. A three, two, one. Awesome. Two more notes. Play the open C string. Then the third fret of that third string. That's your E flat and then open all right and if you bend that note a little bit just pull the string down all right that is the entire riff okay one more time and then we're going to take a look at the diagram join in with me third finger at the first string third fret hands soft curled Right? Try not to have the wrist sticking out. Try not to have the wrist pulled back. Often it's the placement of the elbow that helps you to find the notes with ease. Okay, so pay attention to what's happening here and here. One, two, nice and slow. Now hop down. O three O. Awesome. Let's go now to the diagram okay and let's play along i'll hold my ukulele like this so you can see real clearly we're going to play it four times in a row you can always watch this video again of course let's keep it chugging along one two three four keep it slow keep it light Take a breath here. One more time. This riff is killer. This is one of the first electric guitar riffs I learned back when I was like 13. It is so cool and it outlines the pentatonic scale. Before we learn the rest of it, Let's take a look 
over the C major chord, what were we playing? This diagram, okay, the first string, okay, is that top line, just like a ukulele tablature. And the notes, instead of having note names like C, B flat, G, F sharp, F, C, E flat, E, they're not named like that. They're named for the scale degrees from which they come. Now, this is something we'll go deeper into in uh, the upcoming workshop. And let me be totally clear. These are here uh, not to make it uh, something cumbersome, all right? You don't want to overthink it, but it's very important if you're going to get into soloing and lead playing to know what scale degree you're playing, okay? Uh, let's play this. In a moment, we're going to play it with a drone, okay? So we can hear each pitch against it. But notice what you're doing. You're going right down that pentatonic scale. It's a blues scale. Let me know in the chat if you're following, if I'm going too fast. The blues scale, okay, it's derived from the major scale. A major scale, in a nutshell, is a diatonic scale. That's seven notes. And you can see each name of the note is corresponds to a scale step like steps up uh you know up to your house stairs okay the pentatonic scale penta right five notes in it and what we do is we take the root note number one the third note is now flattened it becomes the flattened third that's why it's called flat three and then f and g are still four and five and b flat the flat seven don't sweat it if this formula isn't memorized, but you will memorize in time that a minor pentatonic scale is always made up of the formula one, flat three, four, five, flat seven. All right, this is printable. It's available at a link down below. Now, we're going through this kind of quickly. You watch this again and again. You know I want you to understand this and get this into your playing. There is one other note that's added and it's the optional blue note okay so pentatonic scales and there are many different kinds of pentatonic scales but pentatonic scales often have additional color notes if we if we add them the scale becomes much more colorful okay they are passing notes so as we're moving from five down on our way to four we Stop on uh, the sharp four or flat five, and that's the blue note. All right, so that is the spelling of the C minor pentatonic scale. Good news, this diagram, this pattern is the exact same pattern used over the F chord, and we're going to move it up the neck in a moment, all right? This is often called a box diagram, a box shape, okay? Different positions of the scale are called boxes okay so this is a cool box for you to know how you feeling out there appreciate you joining me let's play the lick over the drone and this will be a little hypnotic and slow because i'd like you to hear how every note corresponds to the drone all right listen to me play once and then you copy all right i'll go first one two three four Try it, friends. Ready? Two, you can do it with me. All right, now every one of those notes has a certain relationship. When you play one, it's the same as the drone. The drone note is a C, okay? It's a C and a G, creating a, a basis of harmony. When you go to the flat three, Listen to how that creates a certain mood, a certain effect. And when you begin to improvise, you can just play with only a few notes and make phrases. All right, the notes you choose, as it says down here, 
not as important as the rhythmic phrasing. And rhythmic phrasing means you're mimicking speech. Da 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 da. So a game you can play is to sing something and then try to mimic it, and vice versa. Play something and then mimic it with your voice. When your voice and your instrument are in alignment, that's a deep level of musicianship. It's also a ton of fun and very centering. All right? Now, we'll get into this some more, but I want to just practice the riff and then play the whole song. So let's get back to the tablature so you can follow along. And then we're going to move it up to F. You'll notice when we move up to F, it's the same exact pattern. I put it in black so you can see the difference. All right, so when we move up to F, we move that same pattern up here to the eighth fret. All right, try it with me. Keep the touch light and don't rush towards the future. Just be with what you're doing right now. Even if your mind says, oh, I should do this faster, that's not what your body is ready for. All right, so bring the body together with the mind. Here it is, eight, eight, six, eight. Let's do it together. One, two, here we go. Right, that last little bit of switching that first finger over to the fifth fret. A little tricky, it's a diagonal line. And the more you practice this, it's just going to become really, really easy. Then play the C again. Ready? Two, three, four. Very good, very good. Now, you can, uh, you can download this later, those of you who are patrons. For now, just follow along with me. There are other links down below, and I'll share more about those in just a moment. Um, now we come to the chorus. You watch this video again and again, of course. You play the chorus. Strum a G down, up, down. Ready, go. And then two beats of rest. Then a B flat then an F. You do that three times. Now that two beats of rest you can fill with scratching, with all kinds of stuff to uh, add some rhythm. Let's play this together nice and slow, then we're gonna jam the whole tune. One, two, chorus, go. Just keep it nice and easy for now. And then after the third time, it goes to a G7 chord. And there's a buildup. You'll notice that the tablature has all arrows moving down the strings, right? The arrows look like they're going up, but they're moving down the strings. And we have a buildup that is a dynamic marking to create some interest. So over two bars, you start quiet. And it builds up, okay? Kind of like a drum solo. Now, this is only a, a rough outline of what's possible. You can put other rhythms into here, and we're going to add some simple variations towards the end of this lesson. Let me know in the chat how this is. Uh, for you. This is definitely a bit more uh, advanced beginner to intermediate stuff and uh, this is because it was requested by many viewers to go a little deeper into things. Don't get me wrong, there's going to be plenty of beginner friendly and even newbie lessons at this channel, but I wanted to offer something for those requesting this kind of stuff. Let's do this one more time all the way through before we sing or you know try to sing the song. And by the way, Singing and playing this riff is tricky, so when you get to the tune, you can just strum. Just strum the song, okay? You could strum it. Let's play this riff. We're going to play C four times, F twice, C twice. Then we do the chorus. 
All right. Follow along. Let's have some fun. Sunshine of Your Love, 1968 by Eric Clapton and Cream. Oh, and a big tip of the hat to everybody in the UK uh, for uh, thank you for giving us Eric Clapton and Cream. Appreciate that very much. All right. One, two, one, two. Here we go. Second time. Third time. Fourth time. Nice and easy. Eighth fret. Back to third fret. Here comes G. Down, up, down. Scratch, scratch. Rest, B flat, F, G. Okay, move on, G7. All right, friends, that's the jam. I hope you are enjoying yourself so far. If you are, please give this video a thumbs up. If you haven't already, subscribe to this channel, Ukulele Zen. I have a lot of fun things planned for this year. There's going to be monthly live stream lessons like this the first Sunday of every month. Open to everybody, of course. More benefits uh, at, um, at the Patreon page for those who wish to support. Get printables and bonus lessons, bonus jams. There will also be every month a Beatles lesson new Beatles tune every month did you see the birthday jam that we did yeah all right so there is a link to that at my channel and you can vote for which Beatles lesson you want me to do each and every month the last Friday of the month now I want to jam this whole tune thank you very much Appreciate you uh, uh, smashing that like button. Really quickly, just a quick announcement because I don't want to forget that the workshop uh, is going to be uh, available right now. Seats are limited. Uh, patrons will get a discount code in about a half an hour. There's going to be a, a notification about that. I've also uh, received word from the Omega Institute that registration is open for the five-day retreat, five days of hanging with me at a beautiful yoga center in the wilderness north of New York City. I know it's a big trip for a lot of folks. Classes will be outdoors under a tent, uh, so it'll be COVID safe. Uh, you can see a link in the description below if you want to join me for five days of classes. It's held in the container of a yoga center so we go deep into process work uh, learning not only how to play our ukulele but how to improvise and many other fun things that i have in store for you of how to bring a daily music practice into your life uh, for wellness and well-being all right so if you want to join me for any of these check the links down below there's so much cool stuff and you know Blues is a massive, massive topic, and I I intend to do other uh, blues webinars in uh, the rest of this year. But for now, it's the most accessible way of getting into it. Uh, thank you very much for being with me. Come on, let's jam. Any questions about this, uh, put them in the chat now. Oh, yeah, the legendary Jack Bruce, absolutely, who passed away, I believe, in 2014. Um Appreciate you being with me. Hey, if, uh, share this video with your friends and um, the workshop that I have a link to down below is going to be a lot of fun. I have so much to share with you. I won't overload you, I promise, okay? Oh, and yeah, you, you will not be spammed if you sign up. No. There's only one kind of spam I like, and it's uh, delivered by John Cleese. Okay, enough of that. Let's get into some jamming, friends. Now, 
strumming this song is tricky. We're going to visit this later in this lesson towards the end. But right now, let's just try playing the entire tune, okay? You'll see that the song sheet has the basic riff, okay? And then the verse, all right? There is one little misprint after the F chord. There is a C chord. I'll be with you when the stars start falling. Okay, it goes back to C. So I apologize. I'm going to fire my editor, uh, but that chord was left out. I'll, I'll fix it and post it to the Patreon site soon. Let's jam. Don't forget, just strum, strum along, and this is a just an absolutely ripping tune to know. Great entry point into blues. Once you can play this, not very long after. Start to make up your own stuff, and I'm only exploring one of the positions. You ready to jam? Thanks for joining me. I wish you and your families well. Here's the tempo. One, two, one, two, hit the riff or strum. Getting near dawn. When lights close their tired eyes, I'll be with you soon, my love, to give you my dawn surprise. I'll be with you soon, darling. I'll be with you soon when the stars start falling. Here comes the chorus. I've been waiting so long to be where I'm going. In the sunshine of your love Riff Just stay on the C riff Or strum a C chord Well, I'm with you, my love The light's shining through on you Yeah, I'm with you, my love in the morning and just we two yeah i'll stay with you darling now i'll stay with you till my seas are dried up back to sea there okay strum any way you like or pick here we go i've been waiting so long to be where I'm going In the sunshine of your love All right, one more verse and then we'll jam. I'm with you, my love. Yeah, honey, it's all shining through you. I'm in the morning, with my love. In the morning, and just we two. Yeah, I'll stay with you, darling, now. I'll stay with you till my seeds are dried up. been waiting so long to be where I'm going in the sunshine of your love one more Slow down with me. <laughs> Thanks for jamming with me. Let's have a little fun with a loop pedal here. I wanted to do this, but I, I didn't have my headset on. Appreciate you joining, friends. 
Um, so now let's turn to uh, to this this riff. Okay, I think we've played it enough times that we might have it under our fingers. And let's just say I'm, I, you know, I set up a little a little beat with my loop. Okay. Let me know how you're feeling in the chat down below. Appreciate you joining. Join in by strumming your chord. It could be a C bar chord or a C7 open. You can also play the riff. What a great way to practice it, right? Just keep going around, around. But as you go around and around, make it lighter each time. Check in with your shoulders that they're open, hearts open breath is deep and I'm gonna jam a little bit here I might use some other positions and I'll break down what I'm doing as best I can here we go Give yourself a big pat on the back for jumping in with something for many folks out there. I imagine that might be one of the first times you've picked up your ukulele and tried to play single notes. And if your fingertips are a little tender, that's okay. All right. The more and more you do this, the stronger your calluses are going to get. All right. Yes, I'll make a video about looping. I actually have it on my, on my schedule. And I plan to share about some concepts for looping. So fun to do. So before we run out of time for this lesson, I want to say thank you. Please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, share it, and check the links down below if you want to go deeper into other tunes. This is one of the harder ones, I got to say. Other ones include Led Zeppelin's Moby Dick. We'll be covering that in the in the workshop as well as Wipeout, Crossroads, classic riffs that become classic tunes and you can learn so much about soloing through them. All right, so if you want to join me, check the links down below and uh, for right now, let's spend a little bit of time dipping our toes into the ocean of improvisation. Okay, here are some concepts. All right, First thing you can do is to spend one minute with just some spontaneous music making. Of course, we practice these patterns just to make sure that they become ingrained in our muscle memory. Let's do that first step right now, okay? So I take it and I might just play nice and slow just to get it in my muscle memory. And I did not include on this diagram the notes on the G string 
because it's not part of the riff, but on the G string, another third fret open. All right, this is one of the advantages of having a low G is that you can get those notes below the C string. No worries if you don't have one, all right? So that's step one. I'm, of course, doing this quickly. You can hang out with this video again. Step one, join in with me. This time we're going to play each note with a little bit of rhythm. Okay, so let's take a rhythm. This is a rhythm my little two-year-old uh, loves to play the drums. He loves to bang out this rhythm. So check it out. It goes like this. One and two and three, four. One and two and three. This is just exercising your picking finger. We're going to do that again, and you can, of course, use a pick. Use your fingers. I'll use a pick right now so you can hear it. One and two and three, four, one and two, just exercising. So you find different ways of exercising. I want to show you one more powerful exercise. All right. I've shared some of this in other videos and at the Patreon page. This is a cool improv pattern. You take a note and go below. And then you go to the next scale note. Play the note below. So I'll show you real, real up close, real slow. Three, open, three. And then we go to the next string. One, three, one. We're going to skip the blue note. Just skip the blue note. And then it can go in the other direction, okay? Where you go like this, one note above. These kind of patterns are found all over music studies and also they form the, mel the patterns of many melodies. Okay, so you practice that. So, I know that was fast, but just hang with me. Next, you've exercised. So now it's time to... Uh, to start speaking for yourself. And what do we do when we start to improvise? We're speaking out the instrument. We are literally expressing what uh, we're trying to have a direct connection between uh, what we hear and what, uh, what we hear inside and trying to make that come out of the instrument. All right, so let's do that right now. One of the quickest and best ways to do this is to is to begin to think about speaking out the instrument. All right, we literally say things. You pick a few words. I don't know, uh, baked beans for breakfast. <laughs> da, 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 baked beans for breakfast. All right, and your ideas can be very, very simple. The rhythm is more important. <laughs> All right. Now, in a moment, I'm going to put on a, uh, a jam track, a little bit of a, a simple drum beat for us to play along with, and I'd like you just to flow with it. And the only rule is that you want to be thinking about playing half of what you think, all right? Um, play 50% less of what you would like to play. In other words, use silence. Silence is your best friend when we're improvising. Silence means you, you play a little something. Here's a little funky beat. Put some silence in there. I only use three notes, all right? And just making very simple phrases at first. 
we're not trying to show off. We're trying to just make a connection between what we hear and what comes out, comes back to the ear, and you make this feedback loop. Come on, let's jam, friends. You ready? One, two, three, four. And then give some space. Do it again. Let's do this together. Ready? One, two, three, four, two, two, three, and four, three, two, three, and four. All right, so we got four bars of time. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, two, three, four, five, two, three, four, six, two, three, four, one. Excuse me, eight bars of time. Come on, jam. Let the last note ring out. Are you having fun? Take your hands off your instrument because I got something cool to share with you real fast and then we're going to keep on the jamming. Now, we're starting to structure things a little bit because we're putting silences in. What I'd like you to do now is to play with this concept. Remember, there are no wrong notes, okay? No wrong notes, okay? Even if you play something that's not on the diagram, just go with it, listen to it, love it, all right? And the other concept is to repeat yourself, okay? Did you notice how I'm creating little phrases? I'm repeating them two and three times and then changing the story. This is a good way to start to improvise. So watch me, I'll demonstrate. First, I'd do it again. Simple. Third time. End the story. End the story with something different. I'll do it again. Second time. Third time. And then you end it, okay? So, let's play with this game. So many ways to improvise. Come on, let's jam. Join in with me. Every note is a good note. Let's jam, thank you. One, two, three, go! Try to repeat yourself. Here we go. Just do your thing, come on. time. Here we go. Come on. <laughs> sweet, sweet, sweet. Even though I can't hear you through the computer, I feel you and I see the excitement in the chat. Thank you for lighting it up. Thank you for spending some time with me. We're going to be ending this lesson soon and landing the plane. Are you having fun? Go slow. This takes time, all right? Time takes time, and it's not so much how much we practice, although that's important. It's the regularity and how deep do we go. When we are going deep into one subject, we infuse ourselves with what we're learning. It's powerful to stay with one thing, complete something, complete a circle. And so this week, just hang out with this. And if you're intrigued and you want to go deeper into what I have uh, going on with my workshop, I'll put it in a link in the chat. It's also in the video description. Go figure. There's always something interesting going on with technology. <laughs> so, friends, um, we are going deep into just one thing at a time. And I hope that you're having fun through this process, all right? There's so much more that we can do with this. Go slow and begin to enjoy 
and listen deeply. One minute of spontaneous music making. We were playing to a funky, upbeat rhythm. We were also playing to a slower, bluesy rock rhythm. But you could treat this in a very meditative way. And let me give you an example of that. So that is what my teacher would call a one no a one minute solo. Just coming into the present moment and expressing whatever is there and then the work is in listening to it with a lot of kindness and enjoying the miracle of wow this this hunk of tree or hunk of carbon fiber makes those sounds all I have to do is reach out and touch it. How cool is that? Did you notice that I was repeating myself? I'm repeating my ideas to create some structure so we don't just go up and down the scale. That would be the musical equivalent of just, you know, going on and on and on, which I can do too, <laughs> if you haven't noticed. Uh, but we're trying to create some structures, not tightness, but just some structures so our improvisations have a little bit of spontaneous form, all right? There's so many fun ways and easy ways to do this. One of the most important ways I've found is to repeat yourself, bring some silence, and try singing what you just played. If you can remember it and sing it back, ba, 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 then you're connected. All right. Is this making sense? Are you having a good time? We are going to, of course, in future lessons, strum songs and sing just like you know, just like the ukulele uh, does, you know. But what I wanted to do is to bring a little bit of uh, improv and some blues jamming into the picture, all right? I hope you had a good time today uh, playing this song. Check the links down below and listen to the original by, uh, you know, Eric Clapton, Ginger Baker, Jack Bruce, Cream. What a killer band. Just amazing. Their live shows. Pew so great so um bending and uh, uh that's a good question andre and this is more that i'll be sharing is that there's all kinds of other ways to bring musicality to a simple lick real quick when you do you know that bend it's true it's easier to bend a nylon string when the, it's in the middle of the neck And, but you can create a fake bend by sliding into the note. And these subtle uh, additions, these decorations can bring so much nuance to your playing. Another one is to quickly hammer on to the string. So I pick and I quickly hammer on. The trick with that technique, of course, is to Keep it light. All right, so when my finger lands, it's very light. So this is a wonderful way to just spend a few minutes with yourself, practicing your scales, making spontaneous music, and then you can jump into all the songs and strum uh, songs that you enjoy playing. Your hands will be stronger. You'll be uh, exercising your own creative powers. And the pentatonic scale is a wonderful way of doing that. There's several different pentatonic scales and i'll be sharing those uh in the future i so appreciate you joining me for this session thank you very much please check the links down below if you'd like to join me for the workshop or for the live event at the omega institute this summer my first live event since 2019 really really excited to be uh, presenting that retreat program again most importantly, I hope that you and your loved ones are doing well 
and that you're feeling uh, peaceful on this beautiful day. And music is a wonderful way of bringing us home to the present moment. I'd like to end today with a brief, just a few minutes of meditation with our instrument. So please sit comfortably with your ukulele. Place your feet flat on the floor. There are links down below. Thank you for your chats. If you uh, wish to support or join as a patron, there's all kinds of benefits waiting for you down there. Thank you. So let's just begin by holding our instrument, feet on the floor comfortably, and begin just to bring some attention to your breathing. Let's close our eyes gently. Take a deep breath in and a slow breath out. And now just allow your attention to settle on your breathing. Breathing naturally and become aware of your in-breath. Breathing in, I'm aware of my in-breath. Breathing out, I'm aware of my out-breath. Breathing in, this is my in-breath. Breathing out, this is my out-breath. And just for these few moments, these few minutes, set aside any projects, any plans, any thoughts of the future or the past, and just be with your breathing coming home to the present moment. It only takes one breath to bring the mind and the body together in unison, in harmony. Breathing in, I follow my in-breath all the way from beginning to end. Breathing out, I follow my out-breath all the way from beginning to end. And breathe in such a way that you soften your body, softening your scalp, the muscles of your face, your shoulders, chest, and belly your sit bones and your legs and your feet, all soft as you follow your breathing in and out. Allow your attention to rest on the pillow of your breath. You are home in the here, you are home in the now. And now as you slowly open your eyes, maintain connection to your in-breath. See if you can keep that thread of awareness on your breathing and in, out, Allow a smile to blossom on your lips. And if you lose connection to the breathing, that's all right. You just come back. That's the game. Coming back. Coming back with kindness. Let's play a game now, breathing and listening deeply to this beautiful ancient scale, the pentatonic scale, this minor pentatonic with its roots in ancient Asia, Africa, all over the world, you find this and other pentatonic scales. It's almost like we're hardwired for it as human beings. And pick a note and just let it ring any note you wish. And breathing and smiling, just listen to it.
And of course, on the ukulele, the notes don't last very long compared to the low strings of a piano or a, other a guitar. But listen to it as it is birthed from the silence, lives on top of silence, and then eventually dissolves into the silence. Listen to that note again. Play it again, please. And now choose a different note, any note you wish. Breathing in. You can choose a different note or play the same one. And now let's explore the scale with spaces, with silences, which will naturally create a gentle rhythm. Listening deeply, breathing. Keep listening. Notice a rhythm has it emerged. Find a phrase that you enjoy and repeat it. to a new one. Totally free, anything you like. Breathing in. I thank you for joining in. Breathing out. I wish you many happy days, weeks, months, and years of music making. Exploring not only songs in form, but also the formless world of improvisation. So I hope you found that helpful and fun. You know, there's uh, an infinite amount of ways to explore these scales and begin to make spontaneous music. All right. Thank you so much again for joining me. I'll be back next week with another live stream ukulele lesson. Excuse me, next month, <laughs> the first Sunday of the month with a live stream ukulele lesson. Okay, and there will be a Beatles ukulele lesson for everyone the last Friday of this month. Thank you for joining me. Hope you'll check the links down below and have a wonderful day. Appreciate you joining me for this lesson. All the best. Good health and happiness to you all. Thank you. Wishing you and your families many blessings. Thanks.